if you look at it from the other side, the might of Russia, the huge mass that Russia represents, has not been able to move more than a few feet beyond what they took uh, a year ago from uh, just now. Now, the NATO-Ukraine Council is gathering today in Brussels after a recent upsurge in Russian attacks across Ukraine. The meeting comes just a couple of days after Olaf Scholz, the German Chancellor, urged other European nations to deliver more military aid to Ukraine. Lord George Robertson is a former Secretary General of NATO. Lord Robertson, um, what do you expect to be talked about today then? I think that the Ukrainians have called this uh, this meeting, uh, which is made up of all the NATO you know, ambassadors plus Ukraine, um, in order to highlight the problems that they're facing at the moment and their uh, very serious need for the kind of ammunition and equipment that is going to allow them to deal with the threat that they're facing, the increasing threat that they are facing now from the... Uh, from the Russians. And, and what do you think is the appetite across Europe to carry on helping Ukraine? Rhetorically, the appetite is very considerable indeed. Everybody is united. Everybody believes that Ukraine must be defended and needs to get the equipment and the ammunition that will be required. But that isn't the same as actually delivering the shells and the ammunition that they require at the moment. Let's just reflect for a moment on, on the, the scale of the problem they're facing. Since February of 2000, 2022, two years ago when this invasion started, the Russians have fired 7,400 missiles at Ukrainian, mainly civil targets, and they've used 3,008 Hundred drones, armed drones against civilian targets. Okay. Now that is a huge amount of munitions that are required. And if, as it happens, they've been able to knock down a number of these from the skies before they could cause the horrendous damage that was inevitable, um, they've had to have the ammunition to do it. And they're faced now at the moment with the fact that the sixty-one billion dollar the United States uh, Congress decided was necessary is now blocked yeah. inside the American Congress because of a dispute over the, the border with Mexico. Right, but we, we can't really expect Europe to, to fill that gap, can we? The uh, European Union just simply does not have the financial resources. Well, the, the European Union voted 50 billion euros uh, for Ukraine, but that got blocked by Hungary, by by. Prime Minister Orban of Hungary, but the rest of the European Union has made the, the proper decision to say they'll get round that because individual countries will put together packages in order to do it. So Europe is going to have to step up to the plate. I, I hope that America and the Americans are going to see sense within the next few weeks and Ukraine will get the help that it, it well, requires. Yeah. I was assured of that when I was there. Right. Just before Christmas. Well, that, that may well be true. But then, of course, this time next year, we could be looking at a President Trump. And that might mean a very different set of circumstances for Ukraine. It might be, but there's a lot of time to go before that happens. Um, and the Ukrainians need to get the ammunition um, before then. You know, they need artillery shells. You know, and and uh, we're not producing enough of them for ourselves never mind for the Ukrainians. And we need, you know, if we were being attacked, factories, military factories would be working 24 hours a day, as they are in Russia uh, today. Uh, and yet they're fighting on our behalf and we're not producing enough even to replenish that, that equipment that we've given to the Ukrainians so far. We need, so there needs to be an increasing resolve to give them what they require in order to make sure that Vladimir gets the message that we are there, as we say we are, yeah, there yeah. until until the end. How would you assess the, the amount of progress that the Ukrainians have been able to make of late? Well, the Ukrainians have not been able to deliver on the sort of the breakthrough um, that in many ways they, 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 they proclaimed 
but was never realistic. But, but if you look at it from the other side, the might of Russia, the huge mass that Russia represents has not been able to move more than a few feet beyond what they took uh, a year ago from uh, just now. So, you know, Russia is not winning, and neither are the Ukrainians at the moment. And we've, we're the only ones, basically, who can actually help the Ukrainians to defeat the Russians. And it's in our interest, our vital national interest, that we do help in order to make sure that they do succeed. Thank you very much. Um, you clearly feel very passionately about it. That's Lord George Robertson, former Secretary General of NATO.